What's up guys, it's Dragon. it's time for another Honest Review, although we can't hold on to the box apparently. So this is the Nerf Rival Finisher uh, XX700, and I know, I know, I'm super late to this one. I'm like really late to this one, but that's because it wasn't super duper compelling to me in the first place, and I found it. Uh, I was looking for some of the new Fortnite stuff so that I could find out if that was any decent. This was 20 bucks, it was at Target. I figured I'd pick it up because I'm trying to minimize my trips into the, the great unknown these days. So, uh, that's never happened before. Always be safe, guys. Um, so, this blaster is 20 bucks. It's essentially a Kronos reshelling, reskinning with an external magazine as opposed to an internal magazine. It's almost like someone over at the old uh, mothership saw that we were making mag fed Kronos out of their super slick, uh, very affordable pistol and said, hey, we'll do that for a dollar or five. This costs $5 more than a regular Kronos. Although, I do just want to point out in the current uh, climate for buying blasters, it's actually pretty hard to find a Kronos for like flat retail on the internet at least. So this might not be a terrible pickup just because it's modern. The double X is of course indicating that this is a 2020 blaster. Now we've got quick load magazine and that might be my one gripe is that this supposedly has a hole in the back of its very proprietary magazine. You can't buy an additional one like this. There's no specific finisher reload. So the blaster comes with instructions that don't require reading, it comes with seven rounds, just enough to load it up once, the blaster itself and the magazine. And here we go. So this blaster is uh, honestly pretty comfy. That's a good feel, that's a good finish. Uh, the slide is a little smaller than on the Kronos because it's lesser and it doesn't auto retract, which is also like the Kronos. So you're coming all the way back and all the way forward. Um, Pretty nice trigger response. Good, uh, as, as my buddy Paul Kowski would say, good girthy grip here. Uh, feels nice, has good uh, contouring, knurling on it. Uh, snappy trigger response, D-prime here. I'm not entirely sure. I guess this is our safety, and you can reach that. As long as you're right-handed, it's not an ambidextrous safety, but a right-hand safety back there, so down. Feels like, might not be doing a whole lot, that safety, but hey. Uh, Priming pretty comfortable, spinability significantly safer than a karambit. Uh, you've got one tack rail up top, no tack rail down below. Muzzle is squared off, a very unique kind of geometry and design for the rival line and then taking uh, its inspiration I suppose from the takedown and the revolver which were also relatively inexpensive rival offerings. This one comes to us in exclusively one color so there is no team red finisher which is really a shame that these are always gonna be on the losing side but uh, it also has no paint. Not paint on one side, no paint. To bring it into $20 uh, for retail, I suppose they just had to skip the painting process altogether. The muzzle kind of has a sling point attachment, but realistically you have a better one right here. Uh, holster ability of this would not be terrible. It's relatively large, uh, but it's a rival pistol, so it's gonna be large. If you can holster a Kronos, you can holster this. Now the thing that's gonna make it harder to holster is that uh, it's got this funky one-way magazine that goes in a la this way. As opposed to the Kronos' internal five-round magazine, this bad boy has a seven-rounder, which is very similar to what we got with the original Apollo, and is functionally like, kind of gone from our world. The seven-rounders just don't show up anymore, so this is an interesting kind of rehashing of that. Super proprietary, I assume this will take all rival magazines, however, uh, in the case of this one specifically, there's an inlet here to accommodate the extra sled on this side. So the question will become, is this going to be compatible in other rival mags fed blasters that, I don't know. So we'll test compatibility when we get downstairs both ways. The one feature on this magazine that's supposed to be very novel, very cool, is that this door here is solid when it's closed, but when you come down and hit the follower like this, it kind of creates a large aperture. Now the best thing about loading rival mags has always been that you can load them Whoop, like that, and this is no exception. However, uh, theoretically, if we pull this all the way down, we now have this kind of door here that we can load rounds into. Was it faster, was it better? I don't know. I think it would be very easy to leave this down since it sticks down at the bottom. And unless there's some sort of release when you push this into the blaster. And there is not. Uh, 
you could you could get some errors this way. You'll also notice that the rounds are kind of kinking uh, up in the top here, but I don't think that that's a huge issue. Let's test performance. It's but a flesh wound. All right, so it actually feels like it's shooting a little bit softer than the Kronos. What did it just, is that? I just, it's breech system pushes the barrel out in front to make the magazine function. That's super funky. Does that mean you can, okay, it's not quite enough force that you can shove the barrel back in, but it will assist your, uh, your thing. So the question now, is supposed to be, well, as long as you're not all the way empty, which kind of defeats the purpose of this. So if you can't reach the nubbin as it does go internal, I don't understand. Um, but if you pull this down and can get a hold of this, you can theoretically top this blaster off while it's primed. Coming in like so, adding a few more rounds. Now again, if you fire through like this, you're gonna get absolutely nothing. So you have to remember to re-engage that sled upwards like that. Uh, so a lot of like features on this, whether they're good for you or bad for you, I think is really gonna depend on whether or not you familiarize yourself with this as a platform. Obviously the ability to constantly top off and reload like this is great for game types like HVZ or really just any sort of round where you're playing kind of casually and scavengering. Uh, basically anything but like competitive, that is a valuable feature, it's desirable. Now the fact that this one's trying to escape right now is a little frustrating, but uh, with a little more design refinement, this could be a really, really cool implementation across the entirety of the MagFed rival lines. That said, let's take it downstairs, let's put it over the chronograph, let's see if it delivers the hits and test that cross compatibility. Let's go. All right guys, so we're out here with the finisher. Let's load it up, put a couple over the crony. 80, 75, 90, 92. Guess I just had to warm up, right guys? 73, well, the, uh, the variance here is quite large, but um, overall not bad performance. I would say it's a little small. It's like a little low for uh, for rival Springer performance. Case in point, uh, this guy should hit harder. However, I didn't actually bring this. I forgot that this. I forgot it auto retracted like that. That's a nice feature. Back from when uh, they were making blasters that you know had paint and <laughs> were fairly prized and had cool features designed for the end user. All right, snark aside, let's uh, let's check this out here real quick. We've got to test a couple of things. My one big gripe about this ergonomically is I do not like the button for the mag release being in front of the magazine. Your thumb goes behind, and so I would like it much more if it were back here somewhere. I don't know who decided that this was a good idea, but that's neither here nor there. Let's uh, just point out that this will take standard magazines. I'm assuming it will uh, chamber through them just as well. Uh, it looks almost cartoonishly large with the 12-rounder, and it's actually got a lot of slop there. However, floaty, floaty stock rival performance. How I've never missed you. Um, but uh, that's good to know. It'll fire uh, those. And then my other thing is because you're not necessarily explicitly buying just the finisher. You're also buying this funky finisher magazine technology. Um, no. No, it will not. Uh, that... It actually tries to push itself out of the magwell uh, because this lip on the side here won't allow you to. So you're pretty married to this magazine, to this blaster. I'm assuming that if it won't work in this Helios, it's not gonna work in anything uh, else. Um, but as long as you have that channel cut in here, and I'm sure you could modify uh, a, another blaster to accept it, but you're really like hoping that you take advantage of this little feed in here, and then you have to remember to do that. I'd rather have a traditional magazine most of the time, but this is a cute feature. And I think, again, really, really good is your scavenge mag for like 
like HVZ. It would be nice to have more than one of them or a reload kit for them, but beggars and choosers and all that. I do want to point out that in a world where you can't get um, a rival Kronos for any sort of reasonable price right now, at least guaranteed at an online retailer, um, 20 bucks rival finisher available pretty much at all. I think it's a Target exclusive actually, but it's on target.com. I know like, I think that this one's a solid pickup and that's rare. Like Hasbro has slacked a lot in 2020, but this is probably the best pistol offering we've seen from them all year. It does everything that it's supposed to. It has really good grip ergo. Uh, it gets light performance it's not as heavy a hitter but it's a rival pistol it's a sidearm the ammo is going to be floaty anyway and it's just a breath of fresh air to see hasbro doing something novel something new that uh, ultimately is designed uh with actual play and use in mind that's pretty cool in and of itself so this one actually gets a big thumbs up if you're a big fan of the rival line and you have a red uh, can of spray paint and are willing to correct the only sin this thing's actually actually committed which is that it's not available in red i highly recommend picking a finisher up i think that they're a solid offering so uh thank you guys so very much for watching i'll throw links down in the description box below if you'd like to pick up one of these i don't think that i can get an affiliate link for it so just find one wherever you can if you'd like to pick up a sweet t-shirt because maybe you're a lifeline main too uh we've got a load of different t-shirt offerings going up all day uh, at foamproshop.com. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you over on twitch.tv backslash vampire drag. Woo!